All right. So, so today, today you're going to be jumping in to um, into analyzing your data, and and really what we're looking for here is is you're going to be doing you're going to be making some sort of presentation of your data. Okay. So, so the whole purpose of this, you know, I'm speaking to you as learners here. The whole purpose of this is is to try to organize your data in a way that you're looking for, ideally, a cause and effect. Okay, how do you see that? How do you see that in data? You see that in data by by identifying some patterns. These are these are types of patterns that you might see in data. Okay, if you can if you can graph things, if you can take your data and arrange it into in a way that shows maybe clusterings, or maybe maybe that there's a line that slopes upward, the data kind of forms a line that slopes upward or a line that slopes downward, or or a line that that kind of or in some, some way that the data sort of moves through space together. So, so then you get to decide as learners, you're gonna, you're gonna decide looking at the data that you collected, what data is gonna go on the Y axis and what data is gonna go on the X axis so that you can um, um, see if there's a pattern that comes out. You wanna see if there's a pattern. Yeah, if, there, if there's no pattern, if there's no pattern, if it's kind of random, then what that's telling you, what the data is telling you there is that there's not likely to be a relationship between those two things. The reason why we're looking for, for patterns is because patterns, patterns indicate a possible relationship. So we're looking for possible relationships between, between whatever is on, whatever's on the Y and whatever's on the X. So what are some examples here? What am I talking about? So, so here's a question. So how does the brightness of a flashlight change with different battery brands? So here we've got different battery brands. And so what we did was we compared voltage and hours of battery use. And so here you can see that, that a pattern emerges. The, and the blue, the blue kind of lines up here. The blue is the Panasonic, the green is the Energizer, and the red is the Duracell. So that you can see that there's there's a pattern that emerges. If there if it was it was all over the place, then we could say that maybe there's no relationship there. But there appears to be some sort of a relationship. Maybe there's a relationship between voltage and hours of use. And maybe we can learn something from that. This is the type of thing that we want to do together. So here's another question: Which sports do students prefer? Now this graph before was a line graph, and this graph over here next is a bar graph. So can we, see, can we see a relationship between these two things? So here's the number of students and here's the sport. So do we, so we can see, we can see um, here, we can see, we can see a preference of things. A bar graph is good at showing you a preference or, or a greater likelihood of something to happen. Okay. So you can learn more about, about bar graphs by clicking on this link. You can learn more about line graphs by clicking on that link. Uh, today, today we want you to think about your data, the data that you collected, and how you might make that into a graph. Your graph, your graph will serve as evidence, and you want to state. So you're gonna. This is how. This is the order in which you're gonna do things. So it's gonna be number one. You set up the evidence. You set up your graph and you say what the graph shows. That's number one. Number two, you're gonna write your claim. So based on the evidence, what's the claim? The claim is an answer to the guiding question. All right, your guiding, your guiding question is, is yeah, that's, that's the, the established question. The established question is, how do cloud cover and greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere um, affect surface temperature of the earth. So that's, that's the given. Okay, what's not given is the evidence. Okay, you're gonna put your evidence in there. You're gonna decide what goes on the X, what goes on the Y, and then, and then what claim can you make based on that data? It's gotta be based on the data. And then, and then, to, then to explain, to justify, how does this evidence support the claim? You're gonna put in a justification. The justification you're gonna you're gonna explain why does this evidence matter. That's gonna be the third thing you do. So it's one you put in the evidence. Two 
and put in the claim. Three, why does this evidence matter? You can include scientific concepts to explain this. Okay, so um, I'm gonna give you a link. What you're gonna do, I'm gonna put you into groups. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna move through this. So, so the guiding question is given. Uh, I'll paste that in there for you. You're gonna do one, you're gonna do the evidence. As a group, you're gonna decide what your evidence is. You're gonna put it in there. Then you're gonna make your claim. Then you're gonna make your justification. So one, two, three. You're gonna do this as groups, okay? All right, so uh, in order to do this by groups, one thing that I need to know from you is who, by showing of hands, who has their data from last time? Okay, so Sergio, good. I'm gonna put you, Sergio is gonna be in group number one. Thank you. Who else has their data? Kenneth, do you have your data? No. No, I no, I wasn't the recorder. I didn't record the data. Oh, damn. Okay. Peter, you have mine, I think. Sergio, yeah. <laughs> Sergio, you and I were in the same group last week, right? Or not last week, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Wasn't it, Sergio? Sergio, you're muted. Oops, oops, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Who's I can I can't tell who's talking. That's Joy. Oh, okay. I think it could have been the previous week. I I remember uh, last session I was with. Um, I can't. I, I thought Joy it. took the to the data collected the data. Uh, Jah I was with Jahani. Oh. And this one gentleman whose camera didn't work, so I couldn't we couldn't see him. <laughs> oh, was that Flint? Okay, and Flint. Yes, oh. yes. Flint's not yeah, here. It was a group of three for last. Yeah, last mm -hmm. time. Yeah. I think Ken and I were in the same group then. Yeah, I was with you. I I was distracted because I had to leave for a little bit. But. Fu Min, did you have did you have the data? I, I couldn't find it. Sorry. Okay. All right. And somebody else was saying, does somebody else have the data? Well, didn't. Okay. So what we're going to do is, uh, <laughs> so I was hoping to have at least two groups. Looks like, looks like we're going to have, looks like we're going to have one giant group here. So that's okay. We'll roll, we'll roll with it. So <laughs> what my plan was, I'll tell you what the plan was is my plan was, was that at least two or three of you would have data. And then, and then I would group you into groups with, with, with one person that had data for each group, right? So Sergio was gonna be in one group and then somebody else with data in another group and then everyone else was gonna be distributed from there. That's okay, we'll, we'll, we'll modify from here. Um, hard to have an argumentation session with only one group, but that's okay. We'll, we'll try to make this work, all right. So, so, so this is what we're gonna do. Okay, so, hmm. All right, Sergio, how, how, well, let me ask you this. How, how do you have your data? Where is your data right now? Is it on a? It, it, it's, in my, it's in my notebook. Oh, okay, it's hand-drawn? It's, it's, yeah, it's hand-drawn and, uh, mm -hmm. and it's, I, I, I'm using the same notebook, so I just I just flip through the pages, and it's mm -hmm. a little bit of data. Okay. It's a... Okay. Craig. Yeah. Are you referring to the data regarding the the temperature and, and the green? Yes. When we did all those analysis. Okay. Yes. Do you have it? No, I just remember <laughs> we talked about it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. My the... slide to see if they're there, but I, I can't find it. So, okay, that's okay. That's okay. Um, you know, you know what I can do is I'm going to. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is just like a real classroom. It's just like a real classroom. <laughs> it's just like a real classroom. Okay, so. You didn't tell us to say that. <laughs> I didn't. 
You're right. I probably did not. Okay. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you another group's data. And I'm still going to, I'm going to break you into, I'm going to break you into different groups here. We're still going to do that. Sounds good. Okay. Oops. Okay. So I'm arranging this now. You're seeing what I'm doing. I, I should have turned off the screen share, but that's okay. And all right, so we've got, I'm gonna break you, I'm gonna put you into three groups. And one group is gonna be with Sergio. And then I'm gonna put you into, into uh, two additional groups. And then you're gonna have your data to look at. Okay, that's group two. That's group two and that's group three. All right, so I'm gonna tell you which groups you're in. All right, so, oops. Okay, Sergio, Sergio's gonna be in group one. Okay, and then can you, can you change your names? Change your names and in front of your name, put your group number on it. So Sergio is gonna be one Sergio Velasco. Okay, and then joining Sergio, who was with Sergio last time? Anybody remember? Okay, Alahi? Yeah, I, I think I was with Sergio. Okay, so can you put a one in front of your name? Okay, anyone else with Sergio? Okay, so let's... Um, Let's see here. Who was is, who is in another group? I was with Kenneth and Joy. Okay, so that's Nicole, Victoria. Nicole. Okay, Victoria is going to be in group two. Could you put a two in front of your in front of your name, Victoria? And then Ken and Joy are going to be in group two. Okay, and that leaves group three. So Elizabeth, your can you put a three in front of your name? And oh, yeah. Fu Min, you put a three in front of, in front of your name. And um, Edward, you want to join? Can you join group number one, Edward? Okay, Edward's going to be in group number one. And um, oops, I, I don't have your, there's someone whose name I don't have. It's not appearing on the bottom there. Mine. Aphrodita, okay, let's put you in, what group were you in? Do you remember? I think I was with Peter. There was only one more person. Well, maybe not Peter. He might not be here. Okay, let's put you, let's put you into group number three. So if you could put a three in front of your name. Uh, I am with the group number two last time. I am with Mr. Bowie. Okay. All right. I'm going to switch you. Okay. Can you switch? I'll switch you into group number two. Go ahead and put a, go ahead and put a two in front of your name. Rename yourself to have a two. And Peter, uh, what group are you in? Do you remember? Uh, you know what? Uh, this is my first time. So I, I'm oh. just squeezing it. Okay. <laughs> I'm just, no, I'm, I'm here for the ride. So. Oh, fantastic. Happy. I'm going to put you into group number three. Is that okay? Can you put, can you That's put, a, can you put okay, a three I'll... in front of your name? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign you, I'm going to assign you to breakout rooms and group number one, group number one is, is Sergio and, and Elahi. Is that how you pronounce your name? Can you, can you tell me? Oh, it's, uh, it's Elahi. Alehe, okay, Alehe. All right, so Sergio, Alehe, and Edward, you're in group number one. So you're gonna go to this document, to this document here, and everyone's gonna be on the same document. So it's important that you go to your slide and that you don't go to, to any different slide than that. So go to this document that I just put in, into chat. 
and group one, Sergio, Elaje, and Edward are gonna be on, on slide number one. That's gonna be where you put in your evidence, your claim, your justification. Group number two, group number two is going to go to slide number two, the slide that I'm showing right now at the same link. And that, because that's okay, it looks good. And that's gonna be Victoria, Ken, Joy, and Elizabeth. And then group number three is gonna be on this third slide, the slide that I have here. And that's gonna be Fu Min and Aphrodita and Peter. Okay, and so then your jobs here are to, are to put your evidence in the evidence, number one, evidence, number two, claim, number three, justification. Okay, any questions before I send you into your breakout rooms? I don't know how to find my slide. Oh, okay, um, the link is right here and that, Victoria, it's slide number two. Right, but I don't okay. know how to get to the link. Oh, it's not. Oh, wait a minute, there's 13 new messages and it's not showing. Okay, that's why. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay. okay, I got it. Okay, you got it? Okay, all right. So I'm gonna set, I'm gonna, oh, I didn't set up the breakout rooms. So now I'm gonna set up the breakout rooms and I'm gonna ask you to let me know, are there any, are there any questions that I can clarify before I, I set you up for that? We're gonna make a claim and justify the claim based on the evidence. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. And okay, and oh, I didn't, I didn't go over. Okay, one thing that I didn't go over was I did not go over your roles. Okay, so last time, remember, we did this by hair length, and we had a getter, a starter, a reporter, and a recorder. Let's keep for for just for today. Let's keep the same roles. So the shortest haired person is going to be the getter. You got to get all the stuff, including links and such. Starter, it's going to ensure equity, make sure everything gets going, and that everyone's everyone's got a fair share, a fair turn to participate. That's the person with the next longest hair. Then the reporter, if you've got three in your group, the reporter and the recorder are going to are going to be performed by the same person. The reporter is the longest haired person. If there's a fourth, well, that's that's the next longest haired person. So um, so. Go ahead and make sure that you, you decide who is doing which role. Uh, here is the link. Here's the link for the group roles, just so that you can see what the group roles are when you get into your groups. Okay, and now I'm gonna send you to the breakout rooms. Hang back if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, starter, make sure that you get things started. Okay, I'm gonna give you Let's give you six minutes. Let's give you six minutes and we'll check in at that point in time. Okay, any questions on that? All right, we'll see you in a few minutes. Hey Fu Min, did you get the did you get the link to get into the breakout room? That's a yes. Very good. <laughs> that was super quick, right? Super, super quick. <laughs> that was two minutes. Super quick. Okay. So so uh, Victoria, I know you have to go. No problem. Um, and, and we're gonna close out, but I wanted to take a minute. I just wanted to take a minute to reflect. Okay, so now you've gone through, you've gone through this, you've gone through this as, as a learner. Okay, so now reflecting on this, what do you think will work for your students? What are some challenges you might anticipate in implementing? And what are some initial plans you can make to address those challenges? So what do you think? What, what might be challenging? Let's just take, let's take a couple minutes to talk about that. 
Yeah, during this sort of remote learning, it's very difficult to move students around in the different group. Some, some nobody got technical issues, they cannot join the group, cannot log in, or computer die, or in the cell, in the, the Wi Fi not working. And then mm -hmm. it's very hard to organize, put them together. So it start at the same time and at the same time. Yeah. 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 Is there, I is there think... a way to address that? I was just going to say for me, what worked was just having enough time to click around and the simulation and just understand and, you know, what the different tabs were, what, what I was able to manipulate, going back to the essential question, and then, you know, setting up the simulation so that I can get some useful data that would help me. And, and, and so just the more time I spent with the simulation, clicking around and, and looking, looking at uh, what was available, that was helpful. And I think uh, it's something that we have to set up for students to have that patience to, I mean, you first see it and it's colorful and there's stuff going on, but after a while it's like that, yeah, they may lose patience in it, but just, you know, it's um, just, just familiarizing them, you know, themselves with the, with the simulation maybe even modeling to students, you know, what is it that the different tabs do, you know, clicking, clicking around. Yeah, just breaking down every task, like yeah. with the going into breakout rooms, you need to select, you need to be familiar with their, the roles, everybody's roles, knowing what to do. I can take the whole period. Yes. Then the next period, just getting familiar with the simulation buttons. The next period, it's just the time. And then the questions need to be very thoughtful. Like I really like those. Yeah, so this process that we did today could take a week or two. Oh, very much. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> yeah. To get to the real meat of the really understanding the concept um i've i've put the survey link into the chat if you don't mind doing the survey uh, and if you have to go uh, please feel free to go but i, I want to hang on for another another two minutes to just kind of close things out but if you have to go then please feel free to go um this if you're if you were to do the full adi sequence it's eight stages right it's going to take you a long long time a long time. Um, my suggestion to you would be to plan out at least to go to stage three. Today we did we did stage three and four, right? At least to that initial argument. Okay, to fill out that initial argument, you you could at least do that. Like that would still take time, but you could at least do that. And then and then if you go that far, why not do an initial argumentation session? Why not do stage four, right? And, and, and then what I've seen teachers do is I've seen teachers build up, right? They do stages one, two, and three. Next time they do one, two, three, four, or maybe they just do one, two, three, four the first time. And then, and then the next time that they do it, they do one through six or maybe one through eight, right? They just, they just add more stages as they, as they go. Um, it takes a lot of time. But, but when you think about this, the, the new standards are as much about process and I would say more about process than they are about, than they are about content. Mm -hmm. We're always worried about covering content. Mm -hmm. okay, I, wonder, I want you to know, you don't have to feel that pressure to cover content. If you're to feel any pressure, the pressure you should feel is about process. Rather than covering all of the content, it should be, can I get all kids through all eight stages by the end of this year? Engaging in all of the science and the engineering practices. So, What are your thoughts on this? 
Is it doable? How are you going to do it? Um, so Craig, so, so my experience with breakout rooms is, is definitely something that takes time to develop. I do yes. use breakout rooms a lot, but I, and I, I do bounce into the breakout rooms to see what students are doing. And there's a big, there's a wide range of some students interacting and some students is completely silent with yes. cameras off and whatnot. Yep. Uh, so yep. that's my, that's a challenge that I see is to get all students engaged in those breakout rooms. Um, and I think the repetition will help after you do it, after you do, after we do this so many times, this is the fourth time we've done it. Even for us, it took a, a little bit of time to get back into it. But yeah. I think if you do it with the students, the times don't, don't get the hang of it. It's like the breakout rooms. Are you, are you assigning roles? That's what I did not do. So okay. I, the only thing I really assigned was the person to start the conversation, but that's it. I haven't done the group roles yet. Okay. So roles and accountability may be something to think about. Joy, were you going to say something? No, I was going to agree with him, you know, in repetition, mm -hmm. you know, and your suggestion of, you know, going through the, uh, say, the first three to four processes and then adding on an additional step, you know, in the process. You know, um, you don't want the students to become uh, overwhelmed and like anything else, when you're teaching a process, it's going to take time and repetition, mm -hmm. you know, to do this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if someone is pressuring you to cover more content, then I, I would think that it would be our responsibility to uh, inform, educate, show, you know, what it is that we are really trying to do with the NGSS, as opposed to their primary thinking as to what science has been, as opposed to it is, to it is right now, you know, and teaching processes, going in that direction instead of, uh, you know, teaching the meanings of different words and et cetera. They're gonna pick up the meanings of words as you go through this process so I don't know. It, it is going to take time, but the more you do it, the easier it becomes. You know, the rotation, I was thinking of the rotation process. Uh, you know, we were struggling with that a little bit, but it, if we were in the classroom and doing a rotational process, it would be easy for us to, for, the, for our students to actually uh, carry out that same process online. That, that's my thinking, you know, so, yes, takes time, takes yeah. repetition, yeah. and a focus on the phenomena. And, and things rarely work, work right the first time, right? right. So we, we got to give ourselves permission right. to, to not get it perfect the first time. And we also have to give our students permission to not get it right the first time. Yeah. Right? This, this is... We're, we're, we're embracing a growth mindset here and we're going to get, we're going to get better at this by, by trying it again and by seeking to improve each time that we do it. I want my students to become, uh, to be able to engage in conversation and argumentation without hostilities. Mm -hmm. We're there to discuss and to, um, uh, I don't want to argue with them. It's just, I was sharing with a parent the other day. I don't think the point here is to get all over the case with your child about maybe not attending, but discussing with them as to what is their claim as to why they're not doing it. You know, so they can build a better relationship with their child and as teachers building a better relationship with our students so that they can open up and not feel uh, intimidated or whatever. You know, we don't know all, okay? I don't know, I just, that's what I see. That yeah. relation. Thank you, Joy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, any, any other additional final words? <clears throat> Uh, 
um, this, this, you may be curious, what do stages five through eight look like? <clears throat> what does it look like? Okay, so we're not gonna get to that today. <laughs> um, but here, if you click on this link here, mm -hmm. um, this will take you to argumentdriveninquiry.com's website where they've got webinars, they've got recorded webinars. If you scroll through, I recommend to watch their recorded webinars for, um, okay, look at this one last, tweaking existing ADI labs. Okay, first, we, we already went through stages one through four. Okay, there's a half an hour. They go through this in half an hour. What does stage, stages one through four look like? So this is how you can review this, okay? Uh, what does stages five through eight look mm -hmm. like? Half an hour, they go through this. So now you can see what they look like, okay? And then, and then you can go back to this, then tweaking ADI labs for distance learning. All right, so that link is found uh, right here on slide number five. So once again, I want to thank you. Uh, you, you are doing, you're doing such fantastic work and then you're coming here and volunteering to, to be a part of this after, after you've spent a long day teaching. You're, you're inspiring, you're inspirational teachers. I'm inspired by you. And I want to thank you for, uh, for coming here and spending time with us today. So uh, email me anytime. Um, and, and I'll get back to you um, as soon as I possibly can. Uh, my email is coming up right there. And, um, and otherwise, uh, thank you so much. Stick around if you have any other questions. Otherwise, uh, have a great afternoon. Thank you, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Time. Thank you. Bye-bye.